How's it going, everyone? Good morning. Um, my name is uh, Harry. I'm with the Open, uh, Open Source Security Foundation, OpenSSF. I'm the chief of staff there. Uh, I've been there for about a year. Uh, if you don't know what OpenSSF does, it's a, um, uh, well, first you can go to OpenSSF.org uh, to, to learn more, but it's an organization that was set up uh, after um, uh, some of the issues we, we had with, with Heartworm and Log4j specifically. Um, to help sustainably secure uh, open source software. So it, uh, it sits within the Linux Foundation. Uh, so that's been about three years now uh, that OpenSSF has been um, operating. We have over 40 different projects, working groups, SIGs, uh, special interest groups. Um, so uh, feel free to, to check it out and uh, see how you can contribute. Today what I wanted to talk about was um, when we, and, and Forgive me, but this is a five-minute talk, and so there's going to be some back-and-forth discussion. We can have that. Um, we can have that. But what I what I wanted to kind of illuminate for an audience was this really this intersection between open source software and AI, and how these two things are playing together. Because we need solutions to help manage this supply chain risk. Um, and so this and so one thing you can do is you can uh, go to the QR code and, and join the AI uh, ML working group that we have at OpenSSF because they're open to ideas. They just started. Um, and so there's a lot of conversations ongoing about what are the right uh, tools, techniques uh, to, um, uh, to address uh, this, this intersection. So first, um, just to explain what that intersection is, uh, it's, it's quite simple to those who work in open source, but open source software, open source packages, are used in AI systems. Those AI systems are open source themselves across a spectrum or uh, different types of modalities. Um, I think it's still evolving is what it, what it means to be an open sourced AI system. But there's, there's certainly a spectrum on which things are open sourced, and you can find a lot of that on Hugging Face. And then from there, you have uh, AI that is augmenting uh, open source software. We're, in fact, advisors to the AI Cyber Challenge which is a DARPA effort to find and fix uh, vulnerabilities leveraging large language models. So you have AI operating to then turn uh, those fixes back to the open source packages that could be in that AI system. And then you have AI as augmenting um, the, the developers or in the development track. AI is producing open source software natively. Maybe that's a future state, but it's definitely going to happen. I don't think there's any stopping that. So at each one of these instances, how are you cryptographically signing your software artifacts? How is scorecard or any sort of other evaluation tool looking at the uh, approaches that are uh, being taken in that repo? Um, there's certainly also the trust factor. How do you trust that any of the underlying data or weights or intentions of the people creating those AI systems um, are, are the right ones? How do you know that what's being produced um, at the end of the day from AI systems back into open source is not nefarious or even misguided, right? One of the things that we early on advised DARPA was if you do find and fix um, vulnerabilities within open source, you could end up finding and fixing a million of them. And you could end up spamming uh, maintainers and contributors. That in, in and of itself is a vulnerability, right? You've just DDoSed a repo, so to speak. So there's multiple angles at which this, this, the supply chain could be attacked, um, could be taken over, uh, could be uh, misguided, whatever words in the English language, as far as I, I understand it, you want um, to use to end up with an outcome that one day, what if somebody has backdoored an, an AI system through open source software? What if that AI system starts you know, turning satellites off? or starts folding proteins that end up killing all of humanity, right? Those are the scary scenarios. And we think of those scenarios coming in through uh, model poisoning, um, or data poisoning, excuse me. Um, and so, yes, that can all happen, right? And there, but there are other scenarios in which, you know, we could, uh, we could see these things happen. So what I'm, a what I'm asking for is more of a dialogue, more of a conversation. Um, how, do, how do we address these things before they become system, systematic issues um, and before they become issues um, that, honestly, we can't solve anymore? 
right? Because that's, that's what we're dealing with in five years. So hopefully I've spoken for uh, enough time that this has kind of um, uh, been something to ruminate on, think on. Some, maybe you have ideas. Um, would love to hear those, have a discussion. Or maybe you think that this is not even the issue. I'd, we'd love to know that as well, right? Because there's always that like near-term issue, short-term issue, and then long-term, right? What are we trying to solve for? Because at the end of the day, we also um, need to produce, um, whether it's frameworks, specifications, um, so, or, or tools. Like, what, what direction should we be headed in? So that's the feedback that I'd love to get from this audience, since we have about 10 minutes uh, and five and five. Uh, but questions, comments, thoughts? How do, we, how do we address this kind of holistic supply chain threat? Anybody? And I'm very blind, so you don't have to raise your hand very high, because I didn't put my glasses on. <laughs> Go ahead. Hello. Uh, it's really good you mentioned it. I'm, I'm the next one to give a talk. I'm going to mention what you're specifically saying. So uh, my question would be, uh, do you see any of the tools out there that already work for attestation of, for example, software packages, containers, things like that, yeah. being able to evolve into also having the responsibility for, for also very fine models, large language models, for yeah. example? So um, we're starting a model signing specification project. And so if you go to the QR code, you can look up and through the links, link tree, you can look up the, that project. It's, it's just starting, right? And they're building a specification based on what SigStore has done. And if you don't know SigStore, it's just uh, SIGstore.dev. Um, and what that does is it provides cryptographic um, signing for software artifacts uh, through, uh, well, it depends on how you implement it, but um, uh, into production, right? So that as you're consuming that software, you can trust that whoever produced it at least signed it. Right, and there are ways to you know get in that uh, that that pipeline, but at least it's it's better than nothing, right? It's better than trusting some random person on the internet. Um, looking to apply that same uh, specification um, or or um, tool, they don't know if they how far they want to go with it, uh, but to uh, to model signing as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's person next to you. Yeah, I guess I kind of had a question on that. Right, is. Uh, on, on the topic of some of the open source vulnerabilities, I mean, you, you think about something like uh, the ZX backdoor, right? Um, where someone was uh, basically moved to a maintainer status and then introduced a, a backdoor in, in the package. Um, are you guys looking into ways to potentially mitigate or address like something like uh, contributor strain, right? So like the maintainers are overburdened or maybe there's not enough maintainers and there's not really a formalized vetting process to integrate a new maintainer. So, I mean, that, that's, that's a very clear like uh, attack chain I would, I would look at. Um, are, are you guys uh, investigating that as well in open source projects? Yeah, certainly with the AI cyber challenge to um, I hate to use the word automate, but automate finding and fixing vulnerabilities. Um, the idea is to at least lessen the burden on maintainers and contributors, right? And so how do you do that with a human factors approach, right? Uh, that is something that we're actively discussing, especially with Linux uh, maintainers, because uh, I didn't mention earlier, OpenSSF is part of the Linux Foundation, so we do have access to some of the, some of the Linux maintainers, obviously. And they've been providing input about how you do this in a um, uh, well, in a human <laughs> readable approach, so to speak. Um, and I'll say there's not a right answer at this point because um, humans have too many opinions uh, and there's also this global nature of how people want to um, protect their project. Um, so the idea is also, well, okay, if, if you as a maintainer want to uh, be solely involved in, in just this project, right? You don't really care how corporate, uh, America, or corporate world looks at this, um, how they consume it, what they do with it, what vulnerabilities they find, that's all on them. There's the idea of hard forking a project um, into a kind of security uh, minded um, fork, right? And maintaining that um, from a foundation level. Um, and then, you know, from an AI perspective, you certainly could um, apply AI to that because it's, it's, it's not scalable, right? We, we're not just buying maintainers. <laughs> That's not a thing. So. Thank you. Yeah.
think there was one behind you. I can't see that far at all. <laughs> yeah, hey, um, I was really, I was thinking about Ken Thompson's on trusting trust and, and the, the notion of a, you know, compiler gone rogue. Um, and that's kind of something that we're looking at where things become embedded and the trust becomes different. I was kind of interested to hear your thoughts on where you think the building of trust is in navigating the intersection. That is a really great um, point because what's not on here is compiler safety, right? What happens at that moment? Um, and I'll say, I don't know of how many startups are in the room or, or how many people are thinking about creating a company, but uh, we do talk a lot, lot to venture capitalists because um, they're always interested in open source and who's using open source. Um, one great example is, is Fast API uh, fellow uh, from Chile was just uh, given a fellowship from Sequoia. Um, so introducing uh, some of these tools at the compiler level is a, an intense focus of a lot of folks. Um, I don't know what the right answer is there, and perhaps in this 10-minute talk I, I should have said I wouldn't know what the right answers are. But I can say that people are very invested in looking at uh, compiler safety and using these tools in that, in that mode. And perhaps that is the next like, iteration of AIXCC in, in a few years. And that's the AI cyber challenge. So I think, oh, hey, I'm here. <laughs> um, I, I think one of the signals we have or that we've attempted to use uh, is the open source scorecards, uh, at least to get some sort of, is this repository healthy? Like some yeah. sort of idea of like, should I bring this thing into my, pro into my project or is that a really bad idea? I'm just curious about how you see the adoption of that, how you see it's affecting this. Has it, has it helped? Like, I, I think it could be one of the signals that we could use in, in like an evaluation kind of model for is this a good idea or not that would help the humans making the decisions. But, yeah. yeah. So a lot of people hate scorecard. Okay. A lot of people love scorecard. <laughs> and you can't really do security in a love and hate type of situation, right? So finding what that standard looks like it has been difficult. Um, and scorecard doesn't apply to hugging face, for example. Hugging face doesn't do all the things that GitHub does, right? And so also, were you trusting the source of that package, right? Are you downloading everything from hugging face, or do you look it up in GitHub and, and get more details and see how it's maintained in GitHub, right, from a code perspective? Um, that's, I mean, that's on the community, right? What does the community want to do? We're an open source foundation at the end of the day. Um, and there's a lot of opinions. <laughs> I don't know what the right answer is. Something like SigStore, though, does give you at least a bit of attestation on provenance, right? Scorecard doesn't necessarily give you that. Scorecard gives you a, time, a point in time metric. So if you are a consumer at a bank, it can make a difference, right? But if you're a, a, a consumer at a 30-person company, it probably won't make the difference, right? So, but there's other things that that 30-person company can do um, to, to look up um, the security of that repo. Um, so it's just kind of uh, time and place. Um, but there's, there's no good answer. There's no right answer. There's certainly no answer that everyone loves. So don't hate me, by the way. That's not a, <laughs> that's why I, I'm, not, I'm not out here pr promoting scorecard uh, purely, right? It's a good tool. People should use it, but it, it does cut both ways. Well, I will say a scorecard has evolved into um, uh, not a simple metric, uh, like a, it had a lot of binary um, pieces in it. So it's evolved its scoring system uh, to be a little bit more um, fungible, I think is the word, um, as well as uh, incorporating all-star in the future, uh, which will uh, give it that, so to speak, policy engine, um, which all-star already exists um, as, a, as an open source project but they're gonna be more integrated in the future. So hopefully that all leads to good things. Any more? All right, don't let, oh, one more? I, no. um, how do you plan on engaging with major players in the AI field like Hugging Face, for example, when it comes to integrating with this new standard? So for example, say model signing. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, go ahead, yeah. Yeah, so I will How do you plan to engage? So, so one thing is we started this AIMO working group, right? And it's about, let's say, nine months old. Um, I'll say it, participation varies. In, in May, we had well over 20 people um, on a call. Um, and then as June comes, you know, we have, we have less. The participants in that are big name companies and startups. Uh, what we'd love to see come to the table is hugging face, right, from a systematic perspective. Um, you can always email me, uh, harry at opensf.org, if, you know, if you know people who to engage. But we come to conferences like this. We go to KubeCon as well, um, and we're engaging AI. It, there's no uh, central place to engage AI folks in person, right, in, in my mind. There's a lot of different conferences, um, but nothing has really stood out. And to me, meeting people in person is you know, better than trusting random people on the internet. Um, so we're, we're trying to get out there, right? The other side of the fence uh, um, is uh, we are, are um, actively engaged with some of the um, heads of security, CISOs, they all have different titles, at, like OpenAI, Anthropic, uh, Google, DeepMind. Um, so we are actively engaged with those particular individuals and the particular things on their, um, on, on, on their topic agenda. Okay, thank you. But from the repo and package perspective, that is a whole new space, right? And perhaps we get to a point where we stop creating new package managers. I don't know. All right. Thanks, all. I think you have a break next. <laughs> <laughs>